Luke and Nate here at the Outdoor Boys YouTube channel, and today we are doing another survival camping video. You excited, Nate? Yeah! <laughs> We're doing frontiersman style surviving. We're here in the old growth forests of Virginia, and we've got our, our possibilities bags. Yeah. Okay, these little, these little leather satchels here uh, have everything we need to survive. You got yours? Yeah. Uh, do you want to see what's inside? Yeah, I do. Some toilet paper. Some paracord, and some marshmallows and hot chocolate, and a headlight. Oh, he gets a headlamp. Hand warmers. Hand warmers in case it gets cold at and night. Tin foil. And a little tin foil. Nothing else. You like your you like your possibilities bag? Yeah. It's cool. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Perfect Nate size. All right, these little leather bags are called possibility bags, and uh, everything you can need you can put right in these little sturdy leather satchels. And let me show you what's in mine. So inside this is my fire starting kit. And I'll show you more about what's inside that a little bit later. And I've got some flour, some spices, and I've got some oatmeal in here. And everything we need to cook our next several meals is in here, as well as a little bit of fishing line. Other than our little bags, we have a few other things. Nathan brought this along. We're going hobo style camp in here. Yeah, those are apple and orange in here. And as far as sleeping bag and tents are concerned, we got one wool blanket between the two of us. Yeah. So we explore a little bit, find a good spot to camp, and then go see about maybe catching some fish? Yeah. All right, let's do it. Look at this. So, so just so if you're building a survival shelter and you need like shingles to make it waterproof, this is a really great way to do that. Hey, here's another one over here. I try check this, check this tree out. Look at this. Look at that. It's a twisty tree. Oh, well, what do you think, Nathan? Yeah, this is perfect. Let's camp here. Yeah, nice and flat, nice and dry. Yeah. Okay, well, why don't you lay down and find the spot that you think is the softest? I'm fine and do you want to make it a little softer? Huh. Here, watch this. I'll show you a trick. Okay. Go over there and grab the corners of the blanket. You think you can pick up all these leaves? Yeah, come over here. There we go, it's Mother Nature's beanbag chair. You know, the older I get, the less I worry about staying warm at night and the more I worry about my back. And so having something soft to sleep on makes a huge difference. But I don't like sleeping straight on leaves because they poke and they itch and there's bugs in there and stuff. So if you can throw a blanket on top of a pile of leaves, it ain't too bad at all. Oh, yeah, there's a little spider with its eggs. All right, there you go. You want me to cut it up for you? You yeah. like your apple? Yeah. I love walking through these old growth forests, but they're kind of barren. Because there's no undergrowth at all, there's no berries, there's no herbs, and there's not much in the way of wildlife because there's nothing to sustain them. 
in this particular forest I haven't seen any sign of deer um, I haven't seen any squirrels so uh, I think we better go catch a fish all right we're gonna try our hand at doing a little fish in here but we're gonna need some bait let's see if we can find any earthworm And normally you just scratch the leaf litter a little bit and get down to the soggy stuff and you'll see earthworms. But uh, it's so dry right now that uh, you get down to the soil and it's still dry. So the earthworms, if they are here, are way down deep. I need to find someplace soggy. Uh, there's a little moisture. Oh, well, look at this, Nate. Look what I just found. Isn't that cool? Yeah. We're in the right spot. There you go, buddy. Uh -huh. Oh, ho! Oh, hello. Hello. I found one, Nate. Nice one. I've been turning over a lot of logs and digging up a lot of mud and I found one worm. Hey, check this out. Oh, -ho, a little piece of cane or bamboo. That is gonna be useful. There. Oh, it's you. All, right. All right, the little piece of sliver I put on the end of my line, it's called a fish gouge. It's a primitive fish hook. The fish swallow it, and as soon as you put tension on the line, the points stick into the side of the fish's throat. So if it goes into its stomach or throat, you've got a pretty decent chance of catching it but you can't set the hook. It's not like a fishing hook. You just gotta wait until they swallow it and then gently pull the fish up and it's either in his gut or it's not. And you lose a lot of bait this way. Um, but it works best with bluegills, sunfish, that sort of thing. So that's what we're trying to do. Now I am targeting panfish, crappie, bluegill, sunfish, that sort of thing. You wanna find them, look for a little bit of deep water with some snags and overhanging trees. That's your jam right there. There we go, there we go. Look at that, he's pulling it. Got a, got a bite? Look at that, oh, I got one. I got one. Oh, he is so tiny. I got a fish. Oh. There we go, a little green sunfish. Now they've got bigger mouths than uh, bluegill do compared to their body size. So uh, he was able to get this thing down, but let's see if we can get him off the hook. Once a fish swallows a gouge, often the only way to get it out is to cut them open. There's not really a lot of catch and release with fish gouges. Let's see. Oh, I got it. And you still have the worm. I still have the worm. You think we should eat him? If we hold him closer to the camera, he'll be a bigger meal. Can I, can I hold him? T t there we go. The world's tiniest stringer. Here, hold on to him. <laughs> when you're fishing in backcountry places, you really got to be quiet and stealthy. When you're fishing in city ponds, it don't matter. It's like people who live in the big city, they don't hear the traffic and the city noise. It's all white noise to them. But if you're from the country, and it's quiet out and you hear anything unusual, it really sticks out. It's the same thing with the fish. It's so quiet here that any noise sticks out. Oh, I'm getting a bite. Oh, I'm getting a bite. Oh, oh, there he go. Oh, oh he got my worm. My fish gouge just broke, so I'm gonna really quick make another one. Uh, the bamboo piece, I left it way over there, so I'm just gonna grab any old piece of hardwood. I think this is a little oak branch. 
it should work just fine. I have spent a lot of time fishing with fish gouges and a couple years ago I really obsessed over it and I made them out of wood, I made them out of bone, um, and I really wanted to catch a catfish with a fish gouge and I burned through probably 15 bluegills and got lots and lots and lots of hits and never once got one to really properly hook up. And what I discovered was that you waste so much bluegill meat trying to catch a catfish that you're just better off eating the bluegill than trying to use them as bait to catch something bigger. Uh, for whatever reason, it's just, I never got it to work with a catfish. That's how it is usually in uh, survival situations. You're better off eating a whole bunch of little animals and plants rather than trying to spend a whole bunch of energy chasing a moose or a buffalo or something. All right, there we go. Got another fish gouge. And honestly, I kind of like this one a little better. It's a little hair larger. Size is really important with fish gouges. Too small and it won't set. Too big, it won't go down. So you got to make it just right. Check it out, the bluegills are bedding. I can see out in the middle, there's all these dimples the size of dinner plates all over. It looks like the surface of the moon, just all these craters. And in the center, there's a pair of bluegills in there and that's where they're making their nests. So the bluegills, not many of them are gonna be in the shallows. If they're out spawning, they're, they're gonna be out there on those beds. Unfortunately, I can't reach them from here, so part of the seasonality of everything you know there's time in a season to catch bluegills and there's a time in the season to gather acorns and a season to get morels and stuff and you've got to kind of know what's in season in your location well we fished for about 30 minutes and managed one very tiny fish so we weren't skunked and it was a decent little demo but uh that's my experience with fishing with fishing gouges it just takes a lot more time and effort I really didn't need to bring a hatchet on this trip, but uh, this is one of my projects over the winter and it's kind of sentimental. I, I really love it, so I brought it along. Oh, perfect. That's what we needed. You tired, Nathan? Yeah. Is that comfy? All right. All right, let me show you my fire starting kit here. Okay, inside I have a bunch of shredded jute. This stuff is basically twine. Then I rub on a belt sander and it makes these fine shavings that just go up like gasoline. Absolutely wonderful stuff. And deeper down in here, I have a little bit of char cloth in a dime bag and I've got a steel striker and a little piece of flint. Char cloth is basically charcoalized cloth. Now what I'm gonna do, and I'm gonna pinch that char cloth right up against the sharp edge right there, because that's where I hope the sparks are gonna go. And I'm gonna grip my striker, and we're gonna go. Like that. Where did, what did I do with my, oh, there you go. There we go. That's how you make fire with traditional flint and steel right there. Put that back in my little can. All right, let's get dinner started. I've got some olive oil. I've got some bread flour. I've got salt and pepper, a little bit of honey, some butter. I'm gonna add some oil. I'm gonna add a, a pinch of salt. I'm gonna add some butter into the, the dough.
All right, we're gonna make a very basic flatbread and cook it on this rock over here. And you don't wanna to add too much water. You want it so that the dough doesn't stick to your hands because if it sticks to your hands, it'll stick to the rock. Tiniest fish ever. All right, let's cook him up. All right, that's feeling good. Get that butter melting on here. I'm gonna put some honey. Let's get the next one going. That white piece? Yeah, here, try it, it's really hot. Yummy, it's really yummy. Mmm, that's good. Mm. The honey mix makes it Really yummy. As for our little fish, we're gonna give him a little salt. Just gonna rip off his spines. Try to make a meal out of this. Now, if I didn't have honey butter flatbread, I would not throw the guts away. I'd just pop the whole thing in my mouth. But I do have it, so I can afford to be selective. Mmm. The little bones. He was one one mouthful. Let's do round two. Oh yeah. This is a different type of survival camping. We're packing really light, we're eating simple foods, we're not building any sort of shelter really. This is for tracking cross country in good weather. You know, you need to go somewhere on foot, it's gonna take a couple days, it looks sunny and nice, you go and do this sort of thing. This, this is real frontier style cross country survival camping and it's kind of fun. All right buddy, you got dessert there? Mine catch a fire, but I'm just blew it out. Hey Nate, look at this. Oh. Wow. Oh. 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 Dad, I found one. I found one too. Oh, you got one? Yeah. Yeah, yeah look at this. Yeah. We caught little toads. Oh, he's kind of cute. Well, I'm going to let him go. There you go, guy. Enjoy. Well, the sun's going to set on us here really quick, so I got to do a couple things to tidy up before it gets dark. First off, I'm gonna take my shirt off because I'm really sweaty and I want it to dry and I want to get dry before the sun sets and it gets cold, okay? The other thing is I gotta pick up all of our stuff that we scattered all over and make sure it's all put away so I can find it in the dark. It's getting dark and I promised Nathan we would watch some movies before we went to sleep. So uh, I'm gonna bust out my phone. I downloaded the new SpongeBob movie. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Are you having fun, Nathan? Yeah. <laughs> well, the sun is set and the movie's over and the bugs are out. That's that's a baby tarantula. Yeah, he looks like it. Look at that. Woohoo! But here, <laughs> try to keep the spiders out. <sighs> There we go. All right, let's go to bed. I'll see you guys in the morning. Well, I kept Nathan up late last night, so I'm gonna let him sleep in as long as he can, and uh, I'm gonna get breakfast ready. All right, so I got some leftover butter, some leftover honey, a little salt, some raisins, and uh, steel cut oatmeal. This is different than the instant oats you're used to. This stuff tastes so much better. Oh, there we go. Steel cut oatmeal with raisins, butter, and honey. The only way this could be better is if I had some cream to put on it. There we go. Carved myself a little spoon.
Well, I made a fire, cooked breakfast, ate it, and Nathan is still out like a light. That boy can sleep anywhere. Let me show you something I got with me. This is the Garmin InReach Mini. It's a GPS device, but it's also a whole lot more than that. This allows my cell phone to send text messages and allows my wife to track my location while I'm out here without cell service. And it's just a nice little device. It even has this SOS button. I can flip up the safety cap, hit that button, and it puts me in touch with first responders. But it's also just nice to be able to text my wife and her to be able to go online and see where I'm at when I don't have cell service. So it just takes a lot of anxiety out of things and it's just a big safety plus because if something happens out here, I can get help immediately. Good morning. Good morning. Oh, hold on, let me get that for you. Ah. Well, here you go, bud. And look, I even carved a spoon for you. This is a spoon? Well, did you have anything crawl on you on the night? No. I had a couple ants get on my face last night. Hey. Well, Nathan, did you have fun? Yeah. <laughs> well, I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video as much as we did making this video. Hey, if you want to see more camping and survival videos, we've got a ton of them, don't we, Nathan? Yeah. <laughs> so we'll put links to all of that in our video description. Don't forget to click subscribe. We put out new videos every Saturday morning. Yeah. If you like this video, don't forget to check out the Outdoor Boys YouTube channel where we have hundreds of videos just like this. And don't forget to click subscribe so you can see other great videos every Saturday morning. And hit that bell button and you'll get notifications. Thanks for watching.